Now, you may not think of Ethiopia as a country that has made significant progress on human development indicators uh, in the last 15 or 20 years, uh, but a look at the data reveals otherwise. Um, since 1990, Ethiopia has quadrupled primary school enrollment, uh, has uh, in, enjoyed a tenfold increase in access to improved sanitation facilities, they've halved infant mortality, and economic growth on average has been about 10 percent since 2004. Um, but that's only part of the story because absolute levels of access are still well below the average, even for sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and this presentation will explore some policy options available to the government of Ethiopia to help leverage development outcomes uh, with a time horizon to 2030. So, uh, despite Ethiopia having made significant progress, um, it still ranks near the bottom of, uh, of countries in its uh, development group and, and also in Africa. Um, in terms of access to improved sanitation, it ranks 174th of 186 countries, uh, and it's 161st in terms of access to clean water. It also has some of the lowest agricultural yields in sub-Saharan Africa, ranking 154th of 186 countries. This leaves Ethiopians vulnerable to price shocks um, and other climatic events that could endanger food security. Um, so some of the key takeaways from the report uh, are that agricultural yields are significantly below what we'd expect given Ethiopia's uh, level of development and that improving yields is the most powerful uh, intervention the government can make in the agricultural sector. Uh, part of the reason for that is that the land under cultivation for crop production has increased significantly since 2000, so there's limited scope to further increase the land under cultivation, which means focusing on yields um, will have the most returns for development. Um, Despite making rapid progress on water and sanitation, Ethiopia still has relatively low levels of access. Um, so continuing to facilitate greater access to clean water and improve sanitation should also be a priority for the government. Um, increasing primary school survival and completion uh, is also a key uh, finding from this report. Ethiopia has done a lot to improve education uh, enrollment in primary schools, but not enough students that enroll in primary survive to the final grade. That's what we mean by uh, survival. So uh, a lot of children are making it to first grade, uh, not a lot are completing primary school. So that's a bottleneck that we identified in the report, and moving more students through that education pipeline could have powerful effects for uh, Ethiopia's economy and for human development in general. Uh, Ethiopia has uh, managed to uh, facilitate a fairly steep decline in fertility rates. Um, this will help, uh, help f uh, speed up the demographic transition and um, it's important that the government continue efforts at family planning um, to ensure that they're able to capitalize on that demographic dividend. Um, domestic revenue collection is also below what we would expect given Ethiopia's level of development and we furthermore um, found that Ethiopia has been a large recipi recipient of overseas development assistance in the past and we expect that uh, contribution to decline as a share of GDP um, over the next 10 to 15 years. So, the government's ability to mobilize revenue um, and distribute it effectively uh, will be instrumental to uh, Ethiopia's development trajectory over the next 15 or 20 years. Um, a lot of the economic growth that I mentioned earlier has been on the back of large-scale public infrastructure investments. Um, a couple notable examples would be the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, uh, which uh, is largely completed, um, but will need some time to fully come online and start producing electricity. Um, so work remains to be done to fully capitalize on that investment. Um, there are also 
several other large hydropower project um, as long as, uh, along with a railway to Djibouti meant to facilitate um, cross-border and international trade. Um, the government ne needs to carefully manage these investments to make sure that they um, come on on schedule, but also that the proper uh, maintenance and upkeep uh, that's required takes place. Um, if, if all that happens, this should help them maintain the pace of economic structural transformation. Um, the, uh, the government has been uh, really trying to bolster the manufacturing sector, um, and there's also been growth in high-value-added services. Um, if Ethiopia hopes to uh, you know, sustain its, its pace of economic growth, further transformation in this direction will be necessary. And finally, um, the government would do well to promote social and political inclusion, both uh, across ethnic, uh, regional, and gender dimensions. So uh, one thing that emerged was that uh, female education lags significantly behind male education attainment. Um, so these are some things that, that emerged from our report. Um, what I'm about to show you now are the effects of different sectoral interventions um, from where we would expect Ethiopia to be in 2030, absent any major changes or policy shifts. So to perform this analysis, we used a uh, modeling tool called the International Futures Modeling System. Um, it's hosted by the Frederick Pardee Center for International Futures at the University of Denver, who has also uh, contributed to the production of this report. Um, that model produces a current path forecast, which is integrated across development sectors and represents a most likely uh, trajectory for Ethiopia's development. So this is where we expect Ethiopia to be in 2030. Um, and these bubbles that you're looking at represent the change from where we expect Ethiopia to be in 2030 um, if the government invests heavily in each of these respective sectors. So um, one thing, uh, so what we're looking at here is on the vertical axis, um, it's the change in the percentage of people living in extreme poverty. This is measured at uh, $1.90 in US dollars per person per day. Um, the uh, vertical, or the, sorry, the horizontal axis on the bottom is measuring the change in the human development index. And the bubble size here represents the change in GDP per capita, again, from where we would expect Ethiopia to be uh, in 2030 um, if it continues making the same kind of investments it's been making over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, I want to draw your attention to two bubbles in particular because we don't have time to, to go through this sector by sector. Is, so the large green bubble in the top right of the graph um, and then the small green bubble in the bottom left corner of the graph. These are the results from a coordinated push on the agricultural sector, um, and also what we think might happen if uh, Ethiopia kind of stopped investing in its agricultural sector, or if the gains we've seen over the last 10 or 15 years sort of leveled off or plateaued. Um, that agricultural resilience bubble in the top right, um, the effects of that are uh, a more than 32% reduction in the number of people living in extreme poverty, a more than 1% improvement in the human development index, and nearly an 8% increase in GDP per capita. So that's a, a best case or a, a, an optimistic uh, scenario for investing in agriculture in Ethiopia. The stalled agricultural scenario represents a 10% increase in the number of people living in poverty, shrinks GDP per capita by about 3.5%, and also causes or, or drives a, a half a percent reduction in Ethiopia's uh, human development index score. Now, if you can imagine a society where almost 70% of the labor force works directly in the agricultural sector, and agriculture contributes uh, nearly 50% to the total value of the economy, you can understand why 
investing in that sector has particularly strong returns uh, for human development. Um, some of other notable results from this scenario are that advancing education has the largest impact on the Human Development Index. Um, also the fertility reduction and improved governance scenarios uh, drive fairly strong uh, increases in GDP per capita um, and also uh, cause uh, positive uh, improvements all along the other metrics. One of the advantages of using an integrated tool like the International Future System is that it allows you to not only look at interventions uh, within and across different development sectors, um, but we can also look at the effects of a combined approach. So what you're looking at now is the same sectoral interventions that we were just looking at along with an integrated development push. Um, so what we did was we took away the negative scenarios and we're just looking at the effects of positive interventions here. Now the integrated development push decreases poverty by more than 35 percent, improves GDP per capita by more than 15 percent, and improves the human development index by more than 4 percent. Um, so it, in, a, in, another, in other words, the, uh, the effect of the combined scenario is kind of more than the sum of its parts. Um, so uh, one of the key takeaways from, from a, uh, a report like this is that um, a coordinated approach pushing uh, human development across different sectors, meaning investing in health while investing in education and promoting family planning and improving the productivity of the agricultural sector, if the government can, can manage to push on all these areas simultaneously, the, the effects should be more powerful than any one, you know, any one target. Um, no area of development is a panacea, and in our view, there aren't really silver bullets um, to helping a country escape from a poverty trap and achieve lower middle income status. So that's um, one of the advantages of using a, an integrated tool like the International Future System. And just to wrap up with a few uh, conclusions, um, two areas that emerged from this research as particularly fruitful uh, for the government to focus on were agriculture um, seems to be the individual sector with the most powerful impacts on human well-being, um, and good governance. Uh, because Ethiopia has such a, a state-led uh, growth model, managing all of those investments while simultaneously promoting social and political inclusion will be fundamental to Ethiopia's future. And it's difficult to overstate the benefits that can come along with good governance. Um, that includes distributing resources more equitably across regional, ethnic, and gendered lines. Um, another thing that emerged was that the integrated push, um, so combining these policies across sectors, has really powerful effects. Um, and it would, uh, it would help leverage development outcomes to uh, focus on, on key areas, um, so agricultural yields, uh, lower pri or primary school survival, um, these kind of things can really help improve development outcomes. Um, and finally, that a failure to implement policies across areas of development could negate a lot of the progress that Ethiopia has made over a country since 1990.